back. Love of Hip Hop New York Season 8, Episode 12, Peace Talk. Pick up where we left off at um, <clears throat> Carl's event. Snoop, tell Sophia, go get your man. Sophia apologized to Jacque and says, you know, um, I'm sorry, Sophia apologized to Jacque. Jacque says they will never be cool. Cayenne asked Jacque, wasn't, wasn't her name, you know, um, <clears throat> Sophia the Thotty? Sophia says, I, I wasn't a thigh in a relationship. Cayenne says to her, I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to him. <clears throat> and Sophia rolls her eyes. Now, during the, uh, I think it's like, go check yourself, whatever, we clearly, distinctly hear Sophia call um, Cayenne a bitch. And even at the start of the very next episode, they play that in what happened before, but they didn't play it in this actual episode. And let Cayenne tell it, it was her being called a bitch that sent her into a raid. And, hey, she tried to push the table and all this other shit and, tried to, and really tried to fuck the get at her. <clears throat> we got Juju, Remy, Jonathan, and Yandy. Juju talks about getting her uh, master's. I, I think she was in the process of getting it, but I think she got it now, so congrats to Juju. Um, <clears throat> she wants Jonathan to do her makeup. Um, I forget for what. I forget exactly for no for the play. She wants uh him to do uh the makeup for the play. That's what it was. Yandy invites them to St. Martin. <clears throat> she wants to invite the young ladies, but pretty much says that uh they need to pretty much mediate and have a sit down. Rich and Mariah, she apologizes to Rich about the whole Cisco situation, saying that um she was mad at the fact that he was dating Momo, which hey, <clears throat> everybody hate no Momo, but y'all know I fucks with Eddie. Momo is Moniz, but y'all know I fucks with Moniz or whatever. And um, <clears throat> she says uh, she was sorry. She brings up his artist and the beef, and she wants him to talk to his artist. And you know he says he will, but you know he wants the good, good. Fucking rich. Um, let me see, <clears throat> Jonathan. Uh, and Jasmine, which is his sister, he talks about gay conversion therapy. Um, apparently, he was locked into a room, injected with hormones, was even given shock therapy. He hasn't talked to his mother. She feels that they need to sit there and talk about it. So, we got uh, Remy, Bianca, and Mariah. Pretty much, Remy want them to do a sit down. <clears throat> Bree. Bree is doing a video with Trina. Rich tells her that she needs to stop fighting. She needs to work on her music. And pretty much just talking to her like a dad, pretty much let her know just like, if you sitting here fucking up the money, then you're fucking up opportunities for you, which means you fucking up opportunities for me, you fucking up my money, we can't fucking have that. So then we have uh, Cayenne, Jacque, and Mariah, and you know, she's in the uh, studio, like what she was working on was like fucking dope, it was like live band and everything, like the shit was cool. And, you know, she kind of opens up and, you know, talk about, you know, she was jumped, you know, a while back. She cries and she um, <clears throat> is upset that she allowed herself to fall back. But my thing is, like, I mean, shit, if you got jumped, then, you know, your jaw got all fucked up. Mind you, Cayenne is fucking gorgeous and everything else. But just like, if that is sitting right here, why would you put yourself in a situation where that can happen again? You know what I'm saying? And so it was one of those places like those tears really kind of didn't move me, but you know, hey, I still like I I like a crazy ass. So we got Rich. Uh, he tells his um, diabetes story to a group, and um, self Rich, Bree, and Yandy, they all talk about having a sit down. Now before I get into this last part, I want to sit here <laughs> again, put a little bit of myself out there. So <clears throat> if y'all been on this channel, y'all know that I talked about myself. Uh, the whole suicide thing, you know, back when I was saying, and for those of you who don't know, just kind of, I guess, bring you guys up to speed, when I was, what, eight? Yeah, I was eight, <clears throat> within like three months, and it was towards the latter part of the year, uh, on my mother's side of the family, I lost uh, my only uncle and one of her sisters, my aunt, and it kind of sucked because my first cousin, that was his mother that he lost. So it was real rough having to kind of like navigate through that with him and not just that one one of his sisters God rest her soul. She passed away from cancer back in uh, 2008, but It was kind of hard to see all of them kind of working through that and then a year later So I'm nine we uh, lost our grandfather right before Thanksgiving 
and then a month later several days after Christmas we lose our grandmother so now we have lost the pillars of the family and it was at that point that the, you know everybody was in their own feelings the family began to break apart and I was closer to my grandmother at the time than I was my mother so I felt like damn I literally just lost my mom and that's how I looked at my grandmother even though my mother was there I don't want anybody to misconstrue that but I just had a better relationship with my grandmother than I did my mother <clears throat> And because everybody was so concerned about, oh, I lost my grandmother, I lost my grandfather, and didn't even think about, okay, well, I'm 10. <laughs> so I was now my grandfather passed away, 10 when my grandmother passed away. So, like, I have vivid memories. Like, I was under my grandparents for years. None of them even cared. <laughs> and, you know, even up before those four died, there was other deaths. So it was one of those ways, like, that spirit was always on me. So I was in a massive depression for three good years where at any moment I would sit and look at something and be like damn maybe I should you know but I never did <clears throat> and no one in my family <laughs> knew my mother did not find out until let me see I left Korea in 15 my mother didn't find out until 2014 and all this shit happened in 1997 like when everything sparked for me so December 1997, my mother didn't find out until 2014. My eldest brother and one of his first cousins, they didn't find out until 2016. And it was shortly after that, some of the rest of my family found out shortly thereafter that I was suicidal way back when. And it was something where it's just like, to some people, it's just like, why would you wait so long? But that is one of those things where it's like, of course, black community, mental illness, things of that nature you don't talk about. And that was a very <clears throat> sore spot for me because it's like, I didn't know opening up how it would be received. I almost say if my mother received it well, brother, not so much. But another story for another day. And that's going to be down the line because there was a whole lot of shit tied in with that. So I did <clears throat> watch some reviews and I know I've heard some people say, you know, they probably already had this talk and why would he wait so long but just like you can't tell somebody when to get over it you know, like when to get the fuck over some shit you can't tell somebody when they need to sit here and talk about things that have happened to them in their lives <clears throat> all in due time and sometimes it's the person that went through it is probably waiting for that other person to probably you know mature a little bit more so they can better receive the information so Jonathan, his mother, his sister, you know, he's going into explicit detail about the conversion. And his mother sent him to the, to the Dominican Republic for his conversion because he was getting bullied. So she felt that in doing this, this would stop the bullying, but not necessarily understanding, you know, the effects that it would have on him. And as he's explaining, she's like, no, no, stop. It, it, you know, it's hurting me. And my thing is... I get that, but it's just like you are not in any place to sit here and say how it's hurting you because of the fact that that shit hurt him. And like the fact that he was being like he was isolated, locked in a room, being injected with hormone shock therapy, where it's just like you don't know the feeling. He even said that he called, I think his mom called him, and she was pretty much just saying, you know, hold on. And because that's, you know, the mother, the caregiver, you know, he just went along with it. So, I mean. As much as I don't like Jonathan on this fucking show, that really, like, that did something to me. Like, I, I man, that, that, that shit was deep. <clears throat> so, the sit-down happens. All the girls got to put their shoes in the bin. Bree says that, you know, she's not a fighter. And says, you know, um, I don't even know what the fuck. I just wrote that. Like, I wrote, okay, whatever. <laughs> but she says she's not a fighter. And I'm, if I was fucking, um... Dream doll, I probably looked at it like, oh, so you're not a fighter, but you didn't somewhat got me involved in the fuck shit. <laughs> but whatever. Um, <clears throat> Remy says, you know, oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. And she says that um, she kind of like puts this uh puts what she's feeling into her music, the disses and everything else. Now, Remy's just like, you can't think there are not repercussions. You can't put that shit in music and don't think it's not going to come back on you. Promoters are not go going to want to sign you for shit like that. Bree says I'm on her breath, but they booked me. <laughs> yeah, this is like Bianca. And Bree calls her a thigh. 
and some other shit. Bianca didn't have enough and pretty much tried to charge and get that ass, but she wasn't able to. Chaos breaks out and it's going to pick up on the next episode. So I will see you guys for Love Hit by Miami, which is coming up uh, in like 10 seconds. <laughs>